ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. It would certainly uh, make me careful about um, allowing access to drugs. Would you walk out of the room uh, and leave them alone with no personnel and no monitoring if you're of the opinion they like to push propofol themselves? Would you walk out of the room in that situation, yes or no? I would no. I would not leave the room. Thank you. You can't justify uh, Conrad Murray's failure to call 911 in the period of time or in the waiting uh, essentially 20 minutes to call 911, can you? No, I cannot. That's an extreme deviation from the standard of care, wouldn't you agree? Again, uh, these classifications are not familiar with me. I would say that given the fact that Dr. Murray is a cardiologist who is certified in advanced cardiopulmonary life support. Objection assumes facts, not in evidence. Overall, you may finish your answer. Well, Did he act like someone who was well-skilled in advanced cardiac life support? Did he act like that? I was not present to make that assessment, sir. You've uh, taken all his statements as true in your assessment, correct? I wouldn't necessarily say I've taken all his statements as true, no. Do you think from your review of his statement to the police that he acted like someone who was well skilled in advanced cardiac life support? I think Dr. Murray, upon returning to Michael Jackson's bedside and finding him apparently in cardio, full cardiopulmonary arrest, probably reacted as, as many physicians would. He was very probably anxious and uh, um, in those situations it's uh, very stressful for anyone, even someone who is ACL as uh, certified. So is that no? He did not act as a well-skilled person trained in advanced cardiac life support? I didn't say that, sir. Okay, well, I asked the question and I'll ask it again. Did Conrad Murray, in your opinion, based on his statements to the police, act like someone well-skilled and well-trained in advanced cardiac life support? I can't make that assessment. I would have done things differently in terms of calling for help and in terms of calling 911. What so would you have done? Immediately I would have called for help, although I understand this was sort of an isolated area and there was, it was... Isolated area? Of the house, yes. I understand it was a special suite uh, of rooms on... It was a bedroom. That's what, that was my question. What would you have done? You said you would have called for help. I'd have called for help. I would have initiated, assessed the patient, initiated cardiopulmonary resuscitation immediately. And after making an assessment and starting cardiopulmonary resuscitation, uh, if you were in that situation and you knew you had no uh, personnel on hand and none of uh, the uh, resuscitation equipment, uh, wouldn't you call 911? Yes, I would call 911. Okay. But my understanding, if I may, is that this was an unusual situation because this was a house that had a secure perimeter and had no phone lines um, in the house. So it's not a typical situation uh, where you can call 911 and have immediate access to the premises. I would certainly agree this was an unusual situation, but uh, Conrad Murray had a cell phone in his hand by his own statement and used it to call Michael Amir Williams. Are you saying he was not capable of pushing 911, maybe putting the phone down on speakerphone and continuing with the cardiopulmonary resuscitation? It's my understanding that, number one... I'm he, asking your opinion. Okay, my opinion... About what you would do. There was a cell phone. There Conrad was a, Murray used it to call Michael Amir Williams. If you were in that situation, you come on the patient... And he had, he's in full cardiopulmonary arrest, and you assess the patient, <clears throat> and you start resuscitative efforts, uh, and you've called for help, wouldn't you use that cell phone to call 911 as quickly as possible? Yes, but in calling 911, you need to know the address. Um, you would uh, need to be able to make sure they could access the, the premises. And my understanding is... <laughs> is it, let me just, so is it your testimony because there was a gate around the house? that that excuses Conrad Murray not calling 911. Is that your testimony? Because you've mentioned this gate a couple times now. No, it doesn't, it doesn't at all. Okay. Then why do you, okay, then 
we can set aside the gate, right? Because that has no bearing on Conrad Murray's need to call 911 as soon as possible, correct? Well, I think that's the reason he called the security individual, uh, Michael Amir, uh, to inform him that he needed um, uh, emergency medical assistance. Okay. And you realize when he called Michael Amir Williams, uh, he didn't tell Michael Amir Will Williams to summon emergency medical assistance. You do realize that, don't you? If that's what you say, yes. Wouldn't you agree that it's much quicker to call 911 than to call uh, someone's personal cell phone number, have it ring through to voicemail, and then leave a message on that voicemail? Wouldn't you think it'd be much quicker to simply call 911 and even put the phone on speakerphone and continue with your resuscitation? Wouldn't you agree with that? Well, you can have people on speed dial and call them even faster than 911. So I, I think certainly 911 is easy to dial. You're absolutely right. Some There's phone. no justification for what Conrad Murray did in failing to immediately call 911, is there? I think he should have called 911 sooner. I do not, however, think it would have made any difference in the outcome of this case. A thready pulse. Uh, he said he checked the pulse oximeter and it read 122, and then he felt the femoral pulse, and he felt a, a thready pulse, correct? In that situation, if you came up upon those facts, how long would it take you to decide that you should call 911? Well, again, if I came upon that situation and I was ACLS certified and a cardiologist, I would immediately start resuscitating the patient and call 911 shortly thereafter. What's shortly thereafter? You know, three to five minutes, I would guess, if you ask me for a number. Uh, paramedics are eventually called and they arrive on the scene. Doesn't a doctor have a moral and ethical obligation to reveal all medicines to that responding emergency personnel that have been given to the patient that could affect the treatment? I think in general we try to recount all the events, but in an emergency situation, as happens in hospital environments uh, as well, it's often difficult to require to recall details in, in that kind of situation. Is it your testimony that the failure to mention propofol to the paramedics was an inability to recall details? Is that your testimony, Dr. White? Well, I'm just saying we details can be overlooked. I don't think I'm not saying it's appropriate. I'm not saying, but I don't think it was done in a devious um, fashion. You think? So I just want to be clear. You think it was just a detail that was overlooked when Conrad Murray failed to advise paramedics he had been administering propofol. Is that your testimony? It was a detail that was overlooked? I don't think I used those words. Um, propofol, a small dose of propofol, I'm not, could not be reversed. It's okay. not like benzodiazepines. Do you understand my question to ask you if propofol could be reversed? Is that how you construed my question? Is that how you construed my question? No. That okay, I, then please listen to the question and please try to answer my question. Is it your testimony that Conrad Murray's failure to inform the paramedics that he had administered propofol was a simply a detail that had been overlooked? Is that your testimony? I think it was something that he overlooked. Okay. Yes. Having time to ponder it and think about it and ride along in the uh, paramedics vehicle while Michael Jackson lay on a gurney um, and then arriving at UCLA, uh, was it still then another detail that he overlooked at UCLA when the emergency room doctor specifically asked him uh, what had taken place? Is that your testimony, that that again was a detail that was overlooked? Well, it was obviously overlooked. He didn't, he didn't well, tell them. Well, not obviously. It could also be a lie, correct? Correct? That's another option. Uh, if you say so, I guess, yeah. That's another option, correct? It's an option, yes. Thank you. Now, you said in your report, uh, Dr. White, that, um, that in your opinion this was, uh, as you said here today, cardiopulmonary arrest, and you characterized it as um, that the central nervous system depressant effects of this combination of medic medications can produce significant ventilatory depressant effects as well as upper airway obstruction parentheses, due to relaxation of the pharyngeal musculature, correct? You mentioned a report. I didn't actually write a report. I wrote a letter. Are you referring to the letter to Mr. Flanagan? 
This is the only thing I was ever given, so whatever you want to call it. This three and a half page document was the only thing I ever received from you. It's a letter or a report? I think it's a letter. And in this letter containing your preliminary thoughts, you state that um, it was likely acute cardiopulmonary arrest where the central nervous system depressant effects of this combination of medications could produce significant ventilatory depressant effects as well as upper airway obstruction, correct? I don't have the document before me, but it sounds, sounds like something I may have written, yes. Would you agree that the risk of adverse drug reactions increases when combinations of sedative and analgesic drugs are administered? When combinations of sedative and analgesic drugs are administered, yes, I would. And that the potential for compromising the respiratory system results from depression of uh, esophageal and laryngeal reflexes, upper airway obstruction, and depression of central hypercarbic and hypoxic ventilator responses. Would you agree with that statement? Correct. Benzodiazepines may be used as an appropriate procedure of sedation or anesthesia. anesthesia. Uh, you're well aware of the contributory effect that these drugs can have and that it increases potentially the dangers of what is being administered. Would you agree with that? You were earlier referring to sedative analgesic. That's very different than just talking about sedatives. I'm not aware of studies that have looked at the effects of prior benzodiazepine administration on ventilatory response to propofol, for example. Is it your testimony that the prior administration of, for example, lorazepam and my dad? As I stated earlier, it depends on the time interval following their administration. When so, the, so there is a risk, but it depends on other factors, but there is a risk, correct? There is potentially a risk but it's only theoretical and it depends on or it assumes that that time interval is fairly short and the blood levels of the benzodiazepine are high. You said it's a, a theoretical risk, but you opined on Friday that because, uh, in your opinion, Michael Jackson swallowed lorazepam pills and then quickly injected propofol that he essentially killed himself, correct? I suggested that one of the possibilities is that there was a high concentration of lorazepam, which I believe was measured at autopsy, and if one then uh, administered very rapidly um, propofol, you could achieve a cardiorespiratory arrest. And certainly an arrhythmia could occur, and this could result in very uh, rapid demise of a patient. Who's responsible for bringing propofol into Michael Jackson's home, in your opinion? Well, Conrad Murray certainly purchased propofol, but I understand Mr. Jackson had his own supply as well. Really? Correct. Where is that in the police interview uh, by Conrad Murray? Well, I had heard that... Um, Objection. Okay. Non-responsive. Where is that Just in the police moment, interview? Please. Sustained. The last partial answer stricken. You, you keep throwing out these uh, uh, kind of rehearsed lines, I, I think. Uh, my question uh, is, where is that? Just a moment, please. Objection, this argument. Sustained. Please. Ask, ask a proper question. Thank you. Where in Conrad Murray's statement to the police is that reflected? I'm not, I don't have the report in front of me. I reviewed it, it in February. And as I indicated, I've had two lengthy objection, conversations. Objection, motion to strike. Would the court admonish the witness? The objection is sustained. The answer stricken. Disregard, please. May, may I ask a favor, ladies and gentlemen, if you could just leave us for a few moments, please? Remember the admonishments. Don't get too comfy. I'm just going to ask that you go into Now it's getting really testy. Dr. White is obstructing his own answers so that he won't be forced to admit the truth here. The judge has ordered the jury out of the out of the courtroom so he could admonish or deal with this without prejudicing the jury. We're not finding out what's actually being said outside the jury's hearing and outside the public. Only those people actually in the courtroom have any privy now as to what's really going on.